you won't want to miss Saltburn in theaters. It's a beautifully wicked tale of privilege and desire, and it stars a killer cast, including Barry Keoghan, Jacob Elordi, and Rosamund Pike. Written and directed by Emerald Fennell, it's the follow-up to her Oscar-winning film, Promising Young Woman. Critics and audiences are calling it dark, twisted, hilarious, and sexy. Don't miss Saltburn in select theaters on November 17th, everywhere Thanksgiving. Rated R, saltburnfilm.com. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You will always find the best of what you love or something new to discover with Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. I love to read. I read with my eyes all the time, okay? I'm in bed reading. I'm, I'll be standing up in the kitchen, finding myself getting a late-night snack while I'm reading. But I don't only read with my eyes. I also read with my ears, okay? If I'm driving, why not have a book playing? Yeah, audiobooks are so useful. I like to listen when I'm cooking uh, because, honestly, my hands are usually full with spoons and knives and vegetables and whatnot. So, like, audiobooks are the way to go, and Audible is what saves me every single time. I have been listening to the Red Rising series, which is one of my favorites. I've already read them all, but now I'm going back and getting a different experience by listening to them, and it really is a dream. I love Audible. Try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. The mission. Find handmade gifts that won't blow your budget. The answer? Etsy. Whether you need something for the home chef in your life like serveware and cookware, or style pieces like rings, clutches, and seasonal jackets for that trend-setting special someone, Etsy has it for all budgets. New to Etsy? Use code HOLIDAY10 for 10% off your first purchase. Maximum discount value of $50. Expires December 31st, 2023. Terms at Etsy.com slash terms. Etsy has it. Welcome back to Watch What Crappens. This is part two of a two-part Real Housewives of Beverly Hills recap. Enjoy. So Crystal's like, um, I googled Asians wearing country camo clothes, and <laughs> what came up was like girls wearing leprechaun outfits. So what am I supposed to wear to this thing? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I mean, I could try to wear a leprechaun thing, see how it goes. So they <laughs> just just be funny. So they're all they're all heading there, and um, Kyle comes in. I just don't it's understand some, why it would be different. Like a country, wouldn't you just wear it the same? Wouldn't everybody wear the same thing to a country western bar? I Which, don't, I don't know. Why wouldn't you just what Google I do know, what to wear to a country western <laughs> bar? <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh full, so hard. <laughs> the internet is full of ridiculous answers to queries. What came up with girls wearing leprechaun outfits? <laughs> That's just funny. <laughs> so, so Kyle's <laughs> Kyle and Dorita are getting glam, and um, Dorita's like, "Oh, here she is, looking looking good, Miss Richards. First of all, I love that hat. That's my favorite. Have you ever gotten a cream pie to the face wearing that hat? I think it would work really well for you. Are you interested in joining a Pantone by any chance?" Mm -mm. So she's like, "This is my Kimosabi hat. Yeah, uh, th they shipped it to me. Uh, by the way, these are real diamonds. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, Kyle, still Kyle, and also your outfit sucks. Okay, there. Now I feel better. So I Dorit, she's like wearing Kyle's like little outfits. short, short uh, leather shorts with black tights or yeah. something. I don't know. I feel like on. Kyle's outfits, like at at this like country western night and also Magic Mike night. I didn't like her. I didn't did not like the outfits. I'm gonna say it right now. They look sort of not cheap, but kind of cheap." You know? Well, Kyle's never really been a fashion, um, one of the most fashionable ones, right? I don't think no. so. I kind of, yeah. I feel like this is a fun time to bring out a caftan. <laughs> might, might I suggest a caftan? Caftan. Okay, so Dorita's like, Woo, shut the front door, please. No wonder I told you that this is my favorite sweet diamonds coil. 
So um, uh, then there's more like everyone's like enjoying the way, you know, like, oh, my God, you look great. Oh, my God. I love this look. I love this look. I love this look. So now they start heading out to a place called Gillies. Um, and Kyle's like, oh my god, I gotta get rid of my gum. And then they, uh, they get to, but first they go to a nice restaurant. So they're all dressed up to go to Gillies. They're wearing like country western attire, but they're in a nice restaurant. So it is kind of funny. And they're all like around this very small table with lights in the middle. And, um, then Kyle orders a mocktail and Garcelle says, I'm surprised Garcelle said this. She goes, okay, how long is this gonna go on? I was like, damn. (laughs) <laughs> not have said and it's like oh it's the same fucking thing and kyle's like yeah everybody just wants me to like drop and do the splits and like uh, do a helicopter with my ponytail but i'm just i'm fun i'm fun no matter what literally no one asked for those things by the way <laughs> no one request requested uh the helicopter with your ponytail and splits <laughs> so uh they get their food and garcelle's like okay well don't hate me but i have a game Producers gave it to me right before I stepped in this restaurant, and I'm obliged yeah. to do it. So, everyone, get ready. Here come the guards. This is kind of sad. They still have to rely on these games. I mean, this is like how many seasons have you all been together now? Come on, you still have to rely on the card games. You've got I know, plenty. It's sad. So it's then, really sad. Um, the first question at Crystal asks, and of course, it's not pointed at all. It's a very subtle show. So it's like, so um, okay, this is a great question, you guys. Is monogamy natural for humans? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, gee, I wonder who that's aimed at. So Erica's like, look, we're all animals at the end of the day. We're all mammals. Right? Females have always sought out whether you'd be a great provider, a great protector, even a female lioness. Look at them. They can go out and pick out young males. They think are on their way. They have strong bloodlines and fuck them. <laughs> wait for that male lion to dance on the stage. Spread their legs. Wait for them to eat about through their leather pants on a national. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> You trying to get to me? <laughs> Just say it, Linus. All right, now it's as opposed to amphibians, they're not very horny. Reptiles, not horny, but mammals. Yeah, mammals like the fuck. <laughs> Dorit's like even female lionesses will seek out stronger, younger males. Erica, what are you talking about? You marry the oldest lion of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, but she did seek the provider part. That's okay. true. Get on so, lions, lions with those private planes they get from crash and burn victims. Yeah, nature channel. Yeah. Well, have you ever sought out a lion that could put you in roller skates and throw a pie in your face? That's my lion. Uh, <laughs> I've got more of a Pillsbury Doe lion. I love them I'm all s- the same. I'm sorry. Are we talking about the Lion King? I just want to remind everyone my husband did direct that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Um, My answer to this question, um, this is Crystal speaking, my answer to this monogamy question is It's just the Lion King, Crystal! (laughs) God, that makes me horny. You know how many people fucked watching the Lion King? Now that's nature right there. Hakuna Matata, am I right? I once watched a three-hour interpretive ballet based on that song. That's what you do when you're on the abt board so kyle is like well i think they're like monogamy it's like individual too because like i think that's like something that like a, probably a lot of people deal with like you know like having to suppress or like whatever and like that's what they say you know like it's difficult for some people to be monogamous like i don't know i just like heard about it like heard it from a friend like that's all like i don't know like mm. and kyle i think is taking every question so personally. She's kind of stumbling all over herself this episode. Like, she does not know what to say to anything that's going on. And Garcelle's like, okay, well, I'll take it over. Uh, since that was a bobbly response, response that made no sense. <laughs> so I have a question for the married ladies, especially someone whose name rhymes with file, uh, but not Kyle specifically. <laughs> Could be anybody. Um, if you found out there was infidelity, one time only, is one time enough to let it go? Would you stay? And Kyle's like, um, uh, 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 just licking the corners of her mouth over and over, like, ah, uh, uh, I don't know, 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 I, 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 I don't want to answer that. Kyle did answer this actually in her book that came out in 2012. Did you read these quotes that were going around on El Internet, no. Ben? No, I didn't. I, this is 
uh, one year after the Travis Kelsey tweets that were going around yesterday, too. So this is a very fertile time for content of our current stars. Oh, God. What was he saying? Oh, they were they were great. It was not offensive. It was actually like the first time in the history of the Internet that someone dug up old tweets and um, it made everyone like the person more. Really? <laughs> he was like, they were full of these like hilariously bad typos. He was like talking about a squirrel and he kept he called the squirrel squirrely. And he's like, why is everyone staring at me? But spelled it like stairs. Um, they're they're pretty great. <laughs> Um, I think he said some mean things in his tweets. Actually, oh, well, I saw I the don't... nice ones. <laughs> oh, I, well, that would make me sad. Um, I don't, I don't want to say anything. I don't know what I saw on Reddit. And now I'm going, now I'm starting to Google while we're doing this. This is already a nine, 19 hour recap. Okay. I'm going to stick to my Kyle thing. So Kyle, uh, shares her relationship advice. I'm getting this from the daily mail, um, from 2012, January, 2012. So that's not like this is current. It's just interesting, uh, in this conversation. So the 42 year old mother of four gives the controversial relationship advice in her new book. Life is not a reality show. Keeping it real with the real housewife who does it all. Um, so good morning. America host, Robin Roberts confronted the socialite about her beliefs on U.S. Breakfast TV this morning. The presenter said she wanted to ask Kyle what she meant by saying, if you cheat on your spouse once, do not tell. You get a free pass. But the star was unapologetic. Kyle said, I know, like, I was gonna get some heat for that. Um, like, I've seen circumstances with people that I know that are in love with their spouse, and then they made one mistake. And I was like, you know, like, this is somebody I know. Like, nobody that anybody knows here. Listen, if this is really a one-time mistake and you did not put this person in jeopardy, like, I personally feel like you should deal with it yourself, you know, and with God. And just not go and say, like, honey, look what I did, because that would ruin their relationship and their life. That's interesting, Hmm. right? Yeah. Like, not really. I thought it was interesting just in the in this uh, in context of this conversation, because this question is specifically like, what would you do if they just cheated like once and Kyle gets all nervous about it? Right. Exactly. Um, Actually, I just looked up another passage from that book. And Kyle says, I just gave a squirrely a piece of bread and it straight smashed all of it. I had no idea they ate bread like that. Ha ha. Hashtag crazy. (laughs) Oh, wait, no, sorry. That's Travis Kelsey. (laughs) wait here's another thing from kyle she says the capacity to live in the past by memory can also emancipate the individual from the tyranny of the present sorry that was also travis kelsey but also kind of kind of by the way i have to say both travis kelsey tweets are relevant to the kyle situation you know the capacity to live in the past by memory can also emancipate the individual from the tyranny of the present sort of just gave a squirrely a piece of bread and it straight smashed all of it i had no idea they ate bread like that i don't know kind of <laughs> kind of applies the episode <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this guy's so big and cute and he's goofy. adorbs yeah yeah I'm gonna go hard in the paint for him <laughs> I'm getting hard in the paint for Travis Kels. Okay. Travis, Travis Kelsey. 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 Um, where were we? Uh, oh, Kyle is talking about uh, just acting like she's like, um, <laughs> do I? This is the yes. last. This is the last Kyle tweet. Happy Easter to all! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Oh God, there's so many ads on this page. It. Um... God damn! God damn it! You stupid internet ads! You're ruining my life here. I'm trying to read. <laughs> I'm trying to read it. You know when it does that when it loads an ad and then you can't. Um, yeah, it's like the it's like the new pop up ad when it's like, uh-huh. oh, yeah. I he said it. something like, "Happy Easter, everybody! Um, thanks to Jesus for taking one for the team." LOL. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we go back to the show. The so point is that like, Travis yeah, is you know, like it's Kyle. individual because <laughs> Crystal's like, um, you guys. Okay. I'm sorry. So um, Kyle's like, yeah, you know, we've dealt with so many rumors for so many years. Like, who cheated? Someone treat- cheated. And then we see a flashback to 2013 of Brandy being like, what about Maurizio cheating, Kyle? And then LVP being like, oh, yes, the Gossip Magazine saying Mauricio was with a younger woman. Was it Portia? Ooh, <laughs> British humor. <laughs> 
And then the Puerto Rico trip where all the ma magazine gate, which just feels like a lifetime ago, all that stuff. And young Ken Todd. So then Kyle's like, um, do I look like the kind of person that will just be like, um, just don't let me find out about it. I mean, no, I don't think so. Okay. Well, listen, we're not all the people we were in 2012, but in 2012 you were. So Erica's like, well, what do you think, Garcelle? How do you feel about it? And Garcelle's like, well, I was in love with a man. And then I found out he was cheating on me for five years with some slut in Chicago. And so what I did was I went to his emails and I told everybody in his emails that he was a cheater. He got very mad that day. I was like, this is just a rehash. Yeah. Why are you asking questions in this game that's just going to have you rehash stuff you've already told us yeah, five this years is like, ago? Yeah, we don't need this. So do we go, I need Garcelle to freshen up her personal life information. <laughs> exactly. I need, I need more interesting uh, stuff I haven't heard before. I think she's sort of like, she's reached the end. So Dorit's like, she's like, but I would go Lorena Bobbitt on PK and then I would make him really pay. Um, so that was a nice call back to like Lorena Bobbitt from 30 years ago. And then, and then basically then a steak, this like very small steak, by the way, this is a thin steak. This is like half an inch tall and they come and they light it on fire on the table as if this is gourmet. I'm like, uh, I feel like if you're going to light a steak on fire, it should at least be like an inch thick. Like, this is where I got really mad. I was Wasn't that a that tomahawk? Steak. It was a very thin tomahawk. It should have been thick. It should have been like, it should have been like this big. And it was like this big. They got, that was highway robbery right there with that tomahawk. Well, they were and burning the part was when, on it. Well, the weirdest part was them when uh, Dorit picked it up with her fork and then moved it to her fingers. I was like, really? <laughs> Dorit just starts pulling it apart with her nails. <laughs> interesting so Kyle, she's like he's burning sage coil i mean isn't that arnie and kyle's like oh my god okay just what's the next card what's the next card well at what point does money stop making people happier and if you reach that point now listen i know a handful of billionaires <laughs> i would never want to trade places with billionaires i know jeff Pesos, and he is a billionaire. Jeff Pesos. <laughs> who is the one who is like, I know billionaires. Was that Diana Jenkins? Um, Someone no, was that was more recent. That was just a few weeks ago on something. I Wasn't there someone who was bragging like, I know billionaires. All oh, right, there's too much in my head right now. So anyway, then they're talking about like oh money and erica's like well i'll tell you the moment that it stops making me happier it's when the lights are on in georgia and the moment that everything is taken care of what you mean you don't feel the next bill i mean god the last bill i dated was terrible i just don't know what the next one's gonna be like so the last couple of years i went from having a lot to nothing and i'm ash i'm not ashamed to have downsized into a one million dollar home but it does make me nervous what if I have to downsize to a $750,000 home? You know, it's crazy living in a $2 million home. It's just the saddest I've ever been in my life. Just to wonder, will the electricity stay on? Now, hold on. I've got to take this tomahawk bone to the five glam people that I've flown to Las <laughs> Vegas to do my hair. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to wrap up this tomahawk and my bindle and attach it to my stick and make my way back to my glam squad. <laughs> Uh, oh, Erica. So she's like, yeah, I would love to go shopping today and be able to be like, oh, wow, I love this purse like the old days. What are you talking about? The old days we saw you go purse shopping and all you could buy was that little tiny change purse. And don't think I'll ever forget that either because you couldn't get permission Tom, from Tom to buy a bigger one. So let's stop acting like you were getting to go through like it was supermarket sweep. Right. In and the so, Dubai store. But I just, I can't feel bad for Erica on this one. Sorry. <laughs> I am enjoying Erica a little bit more, but she can't be complaining about how poor she is while Mikey is still following her, you know, with clouds of true. ones, you know, floating around his head. Yeah. Cause she does the whole thing about how, you know, like, you know, like the, the, the bills coming in and she's like, like, you know, living with, with Tom, everything was comfortable. She didn't have to pay for anything, but now like, she's not like she's not traveling and she's like wishing she could be out on vacation but she's just trying to rebuild her life and it's scary because as much money comes in as much money goes out i'm like yes and then sitting on your sofa right now waiting to put you into your next look 
Mm -hmm. So Erica's like, I can say, hey, I got out of a fucked up marriage. And yeah, you know, buddy, whatever. Fuck the buddy. God, I actually would fuck buddy if I could. I fucked buddy before. It's not as bad <laughs> as you would think. I would suggest rapping in saran wrap, but that's neither here nor there. When you stop talking about your freedom, things like that, it's a much different situation. Much different, much different situations. We're talking about freedom right now. Freedom from electric bills. And Garcelle's like, wow, wow, Erica, wow. Erica, that is the first time we've ever heard you say something like that. Yeah, well, I've had to be on the defensive for so long. That's right. You thought I was bearing my soul. I was just using this to make you guys all feel bad because I was attacked for so many things. With all of that being said, it was ugly. And a lot of people think I almost kind of wanted it to be true. And now that there's more time, I get to regain a sense of who I really am and not what was said and... I almost don't want to think about it too much because if I get to thinking about it too much, it can become overwhelming and sort of like a snowstorm in Pasadena, just sort of big white out of emotions and you get down the rabbit hole that I live in currently. I actually live in a rabbit hole right now. I had to downsize incredibly. Yeah, I perform shows for the cast of Watership Down. They said they don't like it. They look like ladies spreading their legs in their little rabbit warm. I say, gotta pay the bills. Pay the bills. I don't take carrots as payment, though. What was I talking about? <laughs> Speaking of rabbit holes, you know, rabbits and mammals. Mammals with holes. And they were always looking for a, a big line for the ho Okay, Erica. Okay, we've gone, we've gone too far with that one. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the end of my monologue. So, thankfully, I'd like to welcome the cast of Michael Jackson's Cirque du Soleil show. All right, which one of you is going to eat me out through my pants? All right, which one of you? Which, which, Michael, kinda... which version of Michael's going to do it? Huh? It is kind of funny because Erica is like, attempting to like bare her soul and then just like michael jackson impersonator just walks up to the table <laughs> dancing with like a cake <laughs> but she's also bearing her soul in this way that's like remember all that stuff i went through and when i was being sued and this and that? she keeps talking about it like it's over and it's not over like one of the lawsuits is there's still lots to go but they're kind of going with her this season they're like okay we've talked about that enough yeah. let's just pretend erica's out of the out of the woods or whatever. Also, what's funny about this is that last year it was a thing when Kathy Hilton wanted to do the conga line through that place in Aspen to Michael Jackson music. Oh. And then Crystal said, isn't that a little problematic? Like, we're not supposed to be asking for Michael Jackson music. And she then people were that. like, how dare, what is going on? Then there was a whole conversation online about what's problematic and why why we can't listen to Michael Jackson anymore. And so on Crystal's birthday, they bring in the entire cast of Michael Jackson impersonators to wish her <laughs> happy birthday. That is very funny. That is very, very funny. <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens come. And here's your prescription. I know just the pharmacy to get this filled. Who are you? A pharmacy benefit manager. A middleman your insurer uses to decide which medicines you can get, what you pay, and sometimes even which pharmacy you should go to. Why can't I go to a pharmacy in my neighborhood? Because I make more money when you go to a pharmacy I own. <laughs> no one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. Over the last 10 years, Bombas has donated over 100 million socks, underwear, and T-shirts to those facing homelessness. If we counted those on air, this ad would last over 1,157 days. But if we counted the time it takes to make a donation possible this holiday season, it would take just a few clicks. Because every time you make a purchase, Bombas donates an item to someone who needs it. Go to bombas.com slash Wondery and use code Wondery for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash Wondery, code Wondery. So now they go over to Gillies, which is like a place with a mechanical bull. It's a country western bar. And um, they're like walking in and they're look looking around. And Garcelle's like, well, the music, the atmosphere, the people, the whiteness. We are not in Beverly Hills right now. Mm -hmm. um, so then they're all ordering their, their, their ordering stuff. And there, so there's like the, the mechanical bull operator he's like one of these people like one of these mechanical bull operators that like does like a little show when no one's on the bull you know he's like well gotta keep people entertained so he like hops up on the bull and like surfs on and everything and um, i just got like, like annoyed oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god it's a fucking gondola guy again 
<laughs> is there anything he can't do? <laughs> he starts doing Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's like he pulls off a mask. Wait a second, Michael Jackson was the gondolier? That feels also kind of racist. He's like, I'm bad, I'm bad. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> it's the thriller. Thriller. <laughs> So now we have another five minute scene of them ordering drinks and then um they each talk about how scared of they they are of the bull, you know? Yeah. And Kyle's like, Oh my god, that is insane. Who's going first right now? And Sutton's like, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about the bull. I'm nervous mm-hmm. about it. I'm nervous about the bull. No, nope. abort abort mission, abort mission, abort bull mission. And so Garcelle's like, Oh, he can manhandle me anytime. <laughs> So Kyle goes first and she like tells this guy, his name is Robert, like, oh my God, just like, please like be like, go easy on me. So like, I like, don't look bad in front of the girls, you know, like make me look good. He's like, look at you. Do you think I can make you look bad if I tried? I mean, if that didn't send her to Morgan Wade right in that moment, I don't know what else. Shit. That made me want to bang Morgan Wade personally. (laughs) I'm like, I'm a lesbian now also. (laughs) So Sutton's like, I'm just watching those girls. Their chests are really bouncing around. I'm looking at my group of girls, and God knows we don't need any of those implants flying around. Um, I did not appreciate this experience here because Kyle gets on, and then Robert, okay, he made her look good, but he was like too easy on her because it's a well-known fact that mechanical bull operators are always nicer to women than they are to men because if a man gets on there, they let them go for three seconds and they put it on high speed and the person goes flying through the window and the, <laughs> the side of the restaurant, you know, but they always make the, they always for the ladies are always like do it like lightly. So I, you know, I understand the politics of bull riding and that's the way it goes, but this was too light. I mean, thrash her around a little bit. Like, you know, ha- the fun of the bull ride is like when you eventually get tossed off the thing, you know, she was basically on like one of those stupid things you're you're you put a quarter in and you put your kid on it outside the supermarket and it bounces for like you know 30 seconds yeah those were terrifying to me as a kid yeah. those little horsey things outside the store i used to yeah, ride them, like, like a little oh, car God. those are also <laughs> basically like child abduction tools i think because a mom's just they're like you know what we should do we should put something right in front of the store in the parking lot <laughs> where parents abandon their children to go inside and then the children are surrounded by strangers parking like well, who does that Wait, you know the parents the would abandon invention. their kids there my mom would i mean she'd be like okay have fun here's a couple of nickels or a couple of quarters or whatever come in when you're done and we would just ride that stupid horse and then go inside when we're done <laughs> First of all, my mom would like never let me do those. My mom was like, no. And uh, second, (laughs) my mom was like, anything that's even considered a sport, please try it. Please just at least try it. You know, it's a sad time in life when you get too big to be able to ride on the top shelf of the of the grocery cart, because those those few years when you can sit on that thing with your legs through those holes. That's a great time. I mean, you're still my goal weight. I look at those little (laughs) holes through the grocery cart every time I'm shopping and I think one day. (laughs) <laughs> One day. And you try to recapture the glory by trying to get into the main cart when you're bigger, but you're not really allowed to do that. So you don't really get to do it very often at, or, or at all. And it's just not the same. Like walking around, it just doesn't compare to just gliding around in your sweet, sweet Babe, shelf ride. Stop thinking about the past. Now we have jazzies. <laughs> Travis Kelsey's like, just got a sweet ride for mom at the grocery store. <laughs> Grabbed a can for her. Uh, so uh yeah so they're doing this bull riding thing i think these are horrible i get uh, uh, i've thrown out my back like picking up a remote control off the ground so i would never do this i think this Mm -hmm. is horrifying and when sutton gets up there i'm scared i'm like she's just she just seems so fragile sutton well she becomes like a she be, she definitely come, becomes like an older lady from the tw- 1920s in the deep south. She's like, pecan to me. I might get the vapors if you go too fast on the bull. I'm like, so I'm just get on the thing and go around a few times. Now we're real going to go slow right now, right? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I want to be real nice. Okay. And so he's like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. You can stop now. And Erica's like, it's Sutton's bull riding skills or anything like a dick riding skills. No wonder she's not getting a second date. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> um, I think it's backwards. That that was backwards. If her dick writing skills are like her bull writing skills, no wonder she's not getting a second date, right? You know what? Uh, I don't think they paid Mike right. for this one. The composition was wrong, but I actually let out a pretty big laugh on that one. I felt like that was... Uh, maybe that's why I started to turn with Erica. I was like, okay, she made me laugh. <laughs> no, she didn't mean. I was like, wow, maybe they stopped paying Mikey for this, <laughs> for this section. Bring it was Mikey Bashert. back. It was Bashert. Um, so, <laughs> so now they, there's like cheers. Okay, so then it's the next morning. Okay, so this is a very Roni thing that happens. Classic Roni thing, which is that chaos emerges from elevator doors opening and then like a meltdown. So I was very happy for what what happened. So they all are leaving this resort's world owned by the Hiltons or Hilton Group, and Eric. They they get the, they go to the elevator bank. They're probably excited because they thought they were going to the bank. And then the uh, the doors open. And um, inside the elevator are Mikey and his boyfriend, Davis, who you may remember is a cast member of Magic Mike. Wow, what a coincidence. Isn't this amazing? In this huge hotel with probably 10 elevators, it just happens to be that Mikey and this guy are coming down at just the right time. That is nuts. So yeah, the door opens. I actually do think it is. A, I don't think it's like the most nuts thing in the world because they're all staying in the same hotel. So like there's a chance that that would happen. But yeah. I don't think you could plan that. Erica's best friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't think so. <laughs> they plan they plan that shit 100%. So Erica's like, oh, Sutton, look here. Here's your chance to apologize to my friend you said was over the top and the show was shitty. And she's like, hey, I did not say that. I did not say that. Do not put words in my mouth, Erica. I did not say that that show was shitty at all. I said the dancers were amazing. It was just the one spread eagle. I'm just a lady. <laughs> just American Ballet Foundation Theater. You get that? You get so that? Anybody Davis get that? Davis, instead of being like, oh, don't worry about it. We're just happy you came. He goes, well, maybe next, maybe you guys come again and next time see the whole show. I was oh, like, fuck off. <laughs> Who does that? Who gets to yell at the audience after their show? I mean, besides me. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, audience. I would never. So um, who does that? I don't think I know. That was I was nice. like, sir. So Sun goes, I mean, I would love to do it really. I mean, I know I missed the good parts. I mean, I know you didn't miss the good parts because your face was in them, but I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um. So, wow. So you guys planned a scene just so one of the Magic Mike cast. Listen, here's why I think it's the most offensive. That cast is supposed to make women feel good. Okay. Not feel shitty for having a weird reaction to you eating somebody out on stage. Okay. You don't get to be offended. You're still supposed to give good service. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Uh, I just think it was, um, it was like, a, I mean, it was Erica doing that. It was, it was actually pretty obnoxious for Erica to do that. It, but it reminded me very much of like something that Luann would do to Ramona. So it was kind of funny to me. Like, I have to admit, like, that is something. And, you know, on Roni, like, actually, not only Lu Luann, Dorinda, they all would have done it to Ramona, right? So I kind of was chuckling at like the brazenness of it all. I just thought that Davis's reaction was like a little, that just felt like a bit much. Like, dude, just. Like, just be chill. Don't be, uh, be cool. Don't be uncool. So the elevator doors close. Sudden is also, a bit, was ridiculous during that whole thing, if you ask me. So Sudden is like, Erica, really? You just put words in my mouth. I never said the show was shitty. I just said it was offensive and tacky and disgusting. And beneath my position as a board member of American Ballet Foundation, which oversees American Ballet Theater. That's all I said, Erica. Listen, I didn't say it was shitty at all. You're just all going to hell. <laughs> Have fun, Erica. <laughs> and Erica goes, well, it doesn't matter if you said it was shitty. I mean, you just said that she said it was shitty. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it does matter. Like, weird. What weird thing to say. And she goes, well, yeah, well, don't say that then. Don't lie. She goes, well, I didn't lie. You didn't like it. And Erica's like, well, listen, the Lent thing is still in effect. I'm not fighting with these women over Lent, but. God gave me the God gave me the permission to confront Sutton. Sutton, yes, God shined upon me that day. He opened the doors and there he was. You just can't time that. He said, you know what, Erica? After the last two years of Sutton treating you so shitty, here's your moment. And I said, thanks, God. <laughs> I'm taking it. <laughs> you know what? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Why not just say sorry? My behavior came from God. God made me do this. I'm actually surprised we have not had more Real Housewives who just blame everything they do on God. They say, sorry, I was told by God I should say this to you. It's not my fault. It was just a divine mission. 
And so now they go to the van, and Sutton's really upset. She's like, that was shitty. That was really shitty. And Garcia's like, oh, God. I mean, the fact that the elevator door opened and they were in the elevator, I can't. Well, I've got to say to Erica. Okay, close the doors. Close the door. Erica, I've got to say, Erica, to purposefully embarrass me. That was kind of mean, Erica. That was kind of mean. Well, here's here's what I okay here, okay I did this. We were having mm-hmm. a great time, and then I heard you weren't having a great time, Magic Mike. And Sutton goes, "Well, just because I didn't want to stay there doesn't affect everyone." So yeah, mm-hmm. but you made it a big deal. Well, it turned into a big deal the more people came out of the theater. <laughs> it only listen. It only became a big deal because of how people reacted to my reaction. So if you don't like people reacting to my reaction, maybe people shouldn't react to my reaction. So okay. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah, but do you have to take it to the point where you're getting heated in the lobby and you got, you know, you, and you got heated and all that stuff? And so I was like, I got heated. I got heated. But we've seen you get heated and lose it so many times, Erica. And she's, and Dorit's like, yes, but, but if you could do it again, sort of like if perhaps PK could do our anniversary again, which I would appreciate, would you have gone back inside just so that Garcelle and Kyle would have gone back or... So we could have all been there. Would you have done that? Why are you trying to pull apart a piece of bologna with your fingernails while you talk to me? (laughs) Just answer the question. If you could go back, would you do it again? And Garcelle's like, no, listen, it doesn't even matter. Now, why can't I just sit in the the lobby until I calm down? Why couldn't I do that? And Kyle's like, well, we weren't going to leave you because you seemed unhinged. So Don't. Don't. Kyle, don't. This is Don't. so Kyle to follow a sudden out and be like, you're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then go, I was just trying to help you. Yeah. And Kyle's like, well, you were in like in the moment you were like acting crazy. And like, it was a very over the top reaction. You and were. Goes, I'm not, you know what? I'm not going to talk about this ad nauseum. I'm not going to do that. Do you feel haunted? Huh? huh? Do you feel haunted? <laughs> like a lion getting ready to fuck somebody for their money? Uh, oh, 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 with y'all, with y'all, me being cornered by y'all again, <gasps> y'all can corner me, and you've all been doing it for months, so I'm used to it. I am used to it. When I show up on the board meetings for American Ballet Foundation, and they're like, where do you want to sit? I said, I'll sit right there in the corner, because that's where I belong, according to my friends. That's all that put me in. Every time Sutton's confronted with anything, she just freaks out like, oh, I'm crying now. Look what you've done to me. <sighs> me being cornered by you? Never. Here we go again, cornering Sutton. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sad that my little shop is in the middle of the block because really I belong. I really am destined to have a corner store. <laughs> like, it's like it's okay Sutton. it's okay she's oh yeah that's great let's just sing like this let's just sing like this and Dorit's like but do you really mean it Sutton? she goes yes I mean that I just don't know how badly y'all don't know how I feel you don't know how badly I feel over this I do I genuinely do know you feel bad that's what I'm saying I genuinely just that's what I just said and Christ was like well my problem is I wish you'd gone after her it's always me who has to go after her. Why doesn't anybody else do it? I miss some good dick going after Sutton. <laughs> I'm the only single one here after Erica. So Dorit's like, well, me too. I wanted to. I, I should have I should have gone after her, but unfortunately, the strippers were arguing over who got to take me onto the stage. So I was a bit busy. I love that this turned into not like Sutton. It's okay. It's like, oh, God. Now, why was I the one who had to deal with Sutton when she was acting like an asshole? You're right. I should have told her. You're acting like an asshole. <laughs> so funny. She's like, she's like, you know, I would have, you know, I would just would have liked for you to have said to her, you know, you're overreacting, you know? Because I was like, well, I wish, she's like, well, I wish you had been the outsider because I always, I feel like I always do say that to her. And Dorit's like, but I would have liked to have just, why don't you have said Sutton, you're overreacting and let's go finish. It's just not nice. She goes, well, you don't know what I said to her. You were out there. Okay. I said all those things. I didn't ask her to come back because she was 10. She was, she was like, cause she was at 10. Sorry. <laughs> Cause she was 10 years old. <laughs> she was out of 10. Okay. Mm. I couldn't ask her to come back. Yes. But could you have taken her from a 10 to a two? <laughs> How? How uh, How are you telling her to calm Sutton down? Sutton's having a fit right next to you right now. You calm her down. 
Yeah. Girl's like, I'm not a therapist. I'm her friend. Dorica's, please, please. I'm not trying to have a screaming match with you. Oh, that is so Dorit. To be like, why are you screaming at me? I've never. I know. She's like, oh, I'm not. I'm not either. I just want. Listen, I'm not attacking you. Guys, guys, please. Gee, guys, guys, mm. guys, guys. Bully, bully, bully. <laughs> well, I'm not going to apologize for this again. I am really sorry for getting or unhinged or whatever. Okay? I'm sorry. I felt uncomfortable. I'm done with this conversation. I'm done. I'm done with this conversation. I'm done with it. I'm done. <laughs> Okay, well, it's done then. Uh, Erica, or do you feel good? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. I feel great. Ugh, hilarious morning. Did you see that thing that happened in the elevators? Oh, we're still talking about it? Uh, I mean, Dorit. Listen, I feel like you finished. You've said everything you wanted to say. So I'm trying to end the conversation so that we can go on. Dorit, honestly, you know the, you know the word I love? Zip it. Okay? Sometimes silence is golden. Just... Zip it. But are you sure you're okay, Sutton? Do you remember yesterday when Sutton got upset at the Magic Mike show? That's an internationally renowned Olivier Award winning show. <laughs> Sutton, any comments on that? Zip it, Dorit. Okay. Silence is golden. Silence, yes, yes. Silence, just like the strippers when we said, now take Sutton up on stage. Silence is gold. So I put silence in my purse and I turned around to get some lays off a shelf. And when I turned back, the golden silence was gone from my purse, State Farm. <laughs> Unfortunately, PK tries to put silence on his hot dogs. I say, no, that's golden's mustard you want, not mm. silence. Commercials. It's almost that magical time of year. Speaking of, what's your favorite Christmas story, Ben? Uh, hands down, The Grinch. Same! It cracks me up that he hates all the merriment. Right, and he steals everyone's presents. But then it's like so heartwarming at the end when like the whole town is still singing and he realizes that there's more to Christmas than just gifts. Oh, I know. It hits me right in the feels. Best part is, Wondery has a new podcast starring The Grinch. And I think there's someone who wants to tell you more about it, Ronnie. Hi, it's me, the Grand Poobah of Bah Humbug, the OG Green Grump, the Grinch. From Wondery, Tis the Grinch Holiday Talk Show is a pathetic attempt by the people of Whoville to use my situation as a teachable moment. So join me, the Grinch. Listen as I launch a campaign against Christmas cheer, grilling celebrity guests like chestnuts on an open fire. Your family will love the show. As you know, I'm famously great with kids. Follow Tis the Grinch Holiday Talk Show on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Here comes one right now. So Just now go. everybody's back at home in Beverly Hills. Kyle is going for a run. Her dogs almost escape again. I'm really rooting for those dogs. I think it do it. Those undisciplined. When I say miserable dogs, not that they are bad dogs, that they are miserable in that pink neon foyer they just want to be out in the streets yeah. they just want to get free they just want color therapy they're like please get us away from these pink lights <laughs> so erica is hitting a bunch a punching bag uh sutton's drinking a greyhound with a ruby red ocean spray this is so funny so sutton is at home drinking alone and i just love that this is her entire scene they're like let's just get a shot of sutton drinking alone because mm -hmm this whole season seems to be going towards Sutton's an alcoholic because they had the whole, well, I don't have, I don't have a bottle of vodka in my purse or whatever they said. Was that Erica who said that? She's like, I do not have a bottle yeah. of vodka in my purse. Yeah. And now they're showing Sutton drinking alone. And then we get an unhinged Sutton scene a little later. So I'm, I'm liking this. Yeah. Someone called out Sutton for having a bottle of vodka at BravoCon, right? Is that where it happened? Um, I don't know. Someone no, did. I think it was in a on the test, show. Yeah, I think it was on the show. Someone had said something. Whatever. Oh, yeah. She walks I around with a bottle blurred. of vodka in her purse. So um, now we have a flashback to sudden. Uh, oh yeah. So now, sorry, Erica and Garcelle get together to have a meal. And so here's uh, another odd pairing. Whoever yeah. thought, whoever asked for a scene with Erica and Garcelle going to lunch. Yes. And um, Erica's talking about like, how oh, so how about Kyle and Dorit having to sleep in the same bed? I don't do well. They're just like talking about Vegas and their and the arranged the arrangements, etc. The sleeping arrangements, just like small talk. And um, 
basically uh they're talking about like how how dorit just goes on and on like she just like prattles on late at night and erica says yeah i know i just sort of zone out and then i come back when she starts talking yeah um and um she's like well i've learned to speak to read you know and erica's like uh, it becomes this you know i don't know they're just talking about they're what in talking. that case what in that case but, setting is so garcelle's like well you know my biggest problem with her the other day is like i shared my feelings and she became defensive about it and uh, wait who are they talking about dorit they're talking about, dorit, so they're talking about yeah. dorit how you just can't have a conversation with dorit because every time garcelle tries to have a conversation with and this is me saying this not garcelle but every time she tries to talk to dorit dorit like why are you yelling at me i don't understand why you're yelling you know it seems to always go that way with dorit hmm. yeah so erica's like well you know you know i think that like you and dorit are going to come around because like i think you guys both want to you guys will you guys will connect eventually and garcia's like well uh, listen if you and i can sit across from each other without a window of glass between us you know what i'm saying uh anything is possible so Erica's like, yeah, Eric, anything is possible. So Garcelle just sort of like reflects on uh, how shocking this is to be at lunch with Erica and like, but like Erica's more open and less guarded and this is like a new Erica. So then Garcelle, Garcelle then says, so how are you after Vegas? I, by the way, I have a little, po I have a little bone to pick uh, in Vegas. You want to hear some bone picking? I'm ready to pick some bones. Well, they're talking about how annoying Sutton was at this Magic Mike show. And Erica's like, you know, shit, that okay. Like, you just, you don't have to drag everybody into it. It's kind of like hijacking the moment, you know? Instead of everybody's having a good time, now we're worried about Sutton. And she's like, that's exactly what happened. And I don't know why I have to defend Sutton all the time. Maybe it's time that Sutton fights her own battles. Dun, what dun, was Garcelle's dun. bone to pick with Erica then? She's... <laughs> there wasn't really one she said i thought you were gonna go after erica i didn't know if she meant like you were gonna follow her out but i think she meant like i thought you were gonna go after her for that but then you didn't go after her but then you kind of went after her later oh, yeah. with the elevator that's, thing that's but i don't know right. why that was a bone to pick oh i think that because i think that maybe it was like you acted like you didn't have an issue but then you did after all that's right i forgot so now uh -huh. the the final scene of the episode which is such a good one so kyle goes over to sutton's house and um uh, avi makes tea for them avi's great i love avi like he's he's great great addition to the season so you know kyle's asking son how she's feeling after vegas and she's like um well it wasn't one of my favorite departures and we see like a flashback to like a day earlier being like i'm cool fine you want to call i'm i'm used to being corny that's fine i'm fine science is golden zip it zip it i am sorry I, i'm deeply sorry for what I said to the dancers, fine. Are you happy? Are you happy? So, so Erica specifically intentionally embarrassed me. Cue the elevator doors. <gasps> oh, Sutton. <laughs> she starts <laughs> doing this crazy impersonation of Erica. She says, now's your chance. You can apologize to the magic mock people. <laughs> Kyle's she's like, okay, crazy well, so do you think she's wasted at this point sutton because so, i feel yes. like they were <laughs> yes the answer is <laughs> yes she showing, is they were showing sutton drinking alone and now like sutton's just completely bonkers yeah so so kyle's like okay well let me just hang on i'm not done yet she goes what well, like, she goes, what are you to read just excuse me i'm not done with what i'm saying She's like, okay, well, let me know when you're done, because I would like to talk then. She goes, okay, well, don't talk to me like that, Kyle. Do not talk to me like that, Kyle. She's like, okay. <laughs> so Sutton's mad because three weeks earlier, the, the Sutton and Kyle made a promise to have each other's back. And, um, you know, like, they, they basically both pledged, like, they'll have each other's back and just be better friends to each other moving forward. So then Sutton says, I had a re revelation after my trip to vegas she's not my true friend and she never had my back and she's never going to have my back well it's, like, it's about time it's about you, time you realize that because that is completely true and so yep. now's the part where now here's the funny thing about this scene it's normally kyle trying to make somebody crazy until they go crazy and then she's like you're crazy right like i guess it's like kyle lighting whatever you would call it <laughs> kyle lighting. but in this case she's trying to make someone crazy but the person is already crazy <laughs> So I don't know if you can gaslight an actual bonfire. You know what I mean? I'm 
I'm not sure, but it's really funny. So Kyle's like, um, are you okay, Sutton? And she's, I'm very okay. Now you, you defend your friend, Kyle. Defend your friend. I mean, even rhymes. Defend your friend, Kyle. And Kyle's like, listen to me, Sutton. No, defend your friend, Kyle. Defend your friend. Don't talk like that, Sutton. Defend your friend, Kyle. <laughs> You are my friend. Why do you think I'm sitting here right now? Do I come over to to scold my non-friends? No, I only do it to my friends. That's why I'm here. So just I just want you to see, just so you can see another perspective, a correct perspective, a perspective of someone who is allegedly your friend. That's all. It doesn't mean I'm not your friend just, so, just because I like to make you feel bad all the time. Well, sometimes you come in when you haven't even heard the whole story, Kyle. She's like, um, I'm actually very offended when you say that. Like, okay, I saw my friend in distress, upset. I go over there, and then you say you insert yourself. By the way, fuck you. That's fucking rude, okay, Sutton? And you have the habit of losing your shit in ridiculous circumstances, too, Sutton. Like, whoa. <laughs> like, I mean, Kyle's not wrong, by the way. But Kyle's why is she wrong. so pissed? Why is she going well, crazy? That's well, well, because Sutton was right. That's why. Because Sutton, Kyle says, like, oh, I saw a friend in distress and I came to help. Yeah. Kyle, oh, the, way, okay, the way that Kyle. Kyle walked over to Sutton, she came over with, like, a, oh, my God, what are you, what's going on with you now? Oh, my God. She's, like, going in there to get the information. And she's not coming in for, like, oh, my God, are you okay? You look really upset. That is not her vibe. So when when Kyle says, you have a habit of losing your shit in ridiculous circumstances, Sutton goes, name him. Name him. Name him. Well, what you did, what you did was, what you name did. Name him. Name well, him. Well, be quiet, and I'm going to say name what they. Him. Name them. I'm trying to na- I'm, name. I'm trying to tell them. you. Name them. Let name me talk, them. Jesus. Name them. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even. Okay. Name I don't. Know. Are, I don't even know if you're actually name okay. I don't, are you actually name okay them. right now? Are you name okay? Them. Are you okay? Name them. Wow. Are is this like? Are you like in the, the mania? Are you Mom. feeling? I paid him to come in here and just sing name him because you don't seem to want to hear. Okay, Gondola boy, you can leave now. <laughs> yeah, Mom. Yeah, name him. <laughs> and Kyle like loses her shit, and then there's like a long pause. And someone goes, name him. <laughs> and Kyle goes, stop doing that. You're being incredibly, incredibly rude, Sutton. And um, Sutton's like, how? How am I being rude? She says, well, if you don't see that, I don't see that. I don't understand the word rude. Uh, well, you want me to get a dictionary? I'm asking you uh, to name uh, the him. <laughs> then be quiet, and I will then. Be quiet, and I will. Like, you didn't you didn't have a gift at Lisa Rinna's house, and you had to say your ugly leather pants. You lost your shit there. <laughs> um, Which... God damn, that clip is so funny every the, single time. The clips that they then, like, Kyle, like, it was funny because Kyle was, like, ready. Like, she, it wasn't even hard for her. She's like, there was the, what you forgot that, what you f- didn't have a gift, then you lost her shit Lake Tahoe, and then this, and then this, mm. and then we, they show the clips in succession, and you're like, oh, God, this woman has given us so much joy <laughs> with her rubbing her face and such. And, and I love that after that whole name them thing, Kyle literally could. She's like, okay, here's 30 examples, you know? <laughs> I know, she really, like, that was a, that was a, that was a bad bluff. Uh, I really wish that they had used the original one, which was Sutton's let the mask go. Yeah. Let the mask go. Just let it go. When she went to the Rena Daughters event and yes. she had Joy brought Malou Joey Malou for whatever, the makeup guy, and Sutton had a fucking fit. That was her first fit ever on TV. And I will never forget that. Let the yeah. mask go. Yeah, that one should have been in that in that montage, but it was just so good. <laughs> so then Kyle's like, um, so are you upset that they didn't ask you to go up there with them? Is that what this is about? And so I goes, ah, this that has nothing to do with it. I was very happy to wear pants that night. And as it happened, I personally enjoy paying for luxury meals and singles. So I was happy I had that stack. I had nothing to do with not being called up on stage. So then that's the most recent example, right? So then we're back and we're back to the kitchen. And Kyle's like, you did not seem okay in Vegas. Uh, You do not seem okay right now, quite frankly. (laughs) Um, So this was great. I love this. So now I guess Sutton and Kyle are officially enemies, which I love that for them. I love that for us. 
I love that for us too, because we've been waiting for someone to uh, truly go against Kyle. And I feel like Sutton's a really good one to do it. Like she, And they've had Kyle, Rinna yeah. there to like be Kyle's, Kyle's always had somebody there to like take the heat and fight with somebody for Kyle. And yeah. now that rinna has gone, nobody else is going to do it. Apparently they're like, have fun. Yeah. Have yeah. fun going for Kyle. <laughs> exactly. I think they all felt like really burned by the the Fox Force Five thing. Like really plummeted their uh, their popularity. I think of that group. So I think they don't want to like. I think they want to distance it. And so yeah, Kyle's on her own, and now Sutton's going to go after her. Ah, oh, love it. Well, so, it sure so feels good to me. Everybody feels good to me. So too. this was like a pretty fun episode. I thought. Yeah. All in yeah, I think all. it's a good season so far. Surprisingly. Yeah, it's a good one. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. We still got a ton coming up on our race to Thanksgiving. We've got Miami this week, Southern oh Charm. Next week, we will have a Patreon bonus video of the Real Housewives of New York girls trip preview, yep. trailer trash. We'll also be doing Married to Medicine this week, so check that out, or next week, this coming Sunday. You know what I mean? And then we'll be doing Real Housewives of Potomac. We're going to be doing Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I'm I mean, we're just going crazy, so it's gonna be great. Come back, join us. We'll be here every day. If you want videos or bonus episodes, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash watch what crap is. Thanks to everybody for your support. We will also be talking to you Monday. Wait, is this crappy hour Monday night? It is, right? No. No. Next no. week is dwell hello. Never mind. Yeah. Next week is dwell hello. We'll see you next week, guys. Love you. Talk Bye. to you next time. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys.
Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Our Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. Today, hip-hop dominates pop culture, but it wasn't always like that. And to tell the story of how that changed, I want to take you back to a very special year in rap. 88, it was too much good music. The world was on fire. fire yeah. I'm Will Smith. This is Class of 88, my new podcast about the moments, albums, and artists that inspired a sonic revolution and secured 1988 as one of hip-hop's most important years. We'll talk to the people who were there. And most of all, we'll bring you some amazing stories. You know what my biggest memory from that tour is? It was your birthday. Yes, and you brought me to Sade, life-size, <laughs> hardboard cutout. This is Class of 88, the story of a year that changed hip-hop. Listen to Class of 88 wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge the entire series right now on the Amazon Music app or Audible.